welcome to Synapse. I'm Dr. Troy Spurl. I'm sitting down today with Liz. Uh, we're going to talk about something that might be a little bit of a surprise to many of you. It's something that can really impact uh, health. Uh, Liz is going to tell us her journey and her testimony and it involves a diagnosis of SIRS and mold or biotoxins. So uh, let's just uh, start this off. I'm going to read uh, one of my favorite quotes. Only God can turn a mess into a message a test into a testimony, a trial into a triumph, a victim into a victory. Thess Thessalonians 5.14, we urge you, brothers, to admonish those who are idle, cheer up those who are discouraged, and help those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. And I love that uh, quote because patience is definitely needed when you hear this story. Uh, <laughs> perseverance is another one. I have a huge amount of respect for, for Liz and everything she's been through. So let's just start with, uh, first of all, what brought you to Synapse? Um, I've had digestive issues probably for the last 25 years, but not real severe. And eventually I had my gallbladder taken out and was a little bit better. Um, but about maybe eight years ago, um, I had severe digestive issues. I was totally bloated and nauseous and couldn't eat. I ended up losing about 35 pounds. Um, had no energy and was really struggling and so I went to the Mayo Clinic and had tests done and they told me I was fine. Um, I knew I wasn't fine and so a friend of mine suggested that I come here and so I did and I have continued to come here year after year. Um, so how long have you been sick before you found out you had SIRS? Well, I imagine I probably six years we were trying a variety of things here and I was diagnosed with multiple other things that we little by little got through um, but eventually uh, you talked to me about something called Sears or SIRS yeah. um, and um, it started to all make sense um, and so for those who don't know it's it's basically a inability to clear mold toxins out of your body and they can compromise a bunch of systems and and we had started cleaning a lot of things up and, and we would have moments of you feeling better and then all of a sudden there'd be a crash. And I remember Liz coming in and you asked one of the best questions that I get. Why? <laughs> Why is this happening? And that's what that question propelled me and our, our docs here to look into it further, to keep, to keep going. And so that's when we eventually got to um, more of the mold scenario. So can you talk just a little bit about uh, what the mold journey was like um, for you? Well, the first thing we determined um, when I came was that I had a, a gluten sensitivity. And um, so we did a, a very disgusting liver cleanse, um, but it worked and I got rid of the, the gluten and I felt lots better, but then I didn't. And so you researched a little more, did a little more, and determined that I still had residual parasites from when I was in the Peace Corps. So I don't even remember what we did, but we worked on that and I felt better, but then I didn't. <laughs> Kept That's, coming back. Yeah. So then um, the, the bloating and the, and the nausea was so severe, and um, I was tested for something called SIBO, or leaky gut. Um, it's a breath test that you did, came back, yeah, big time had that. Um, so I was on a special diet for probably four to six months, um, pretty, pretty strict diet, but followed that and started to feel lots better. And I will say this, Liz is very determined and very compliant. She did amazing at, at what we asked her to do. That's how we knew when we got it or didn't get it. There was always something. And for those of you that are watching, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's when the bacteria uh, from the colon get into the wrong spot in our digestive system or some other bad bacteria get there and it can block absorption. What we now know, and this research just came out in the last year, is that mycotoxins or biotoxins from mold damage the tips of the microvilli in our small intestine. That's where dairy and gluten are absorbed. So the toxins from the mold were damaging the lining of the digestive tract and that can cause and lead to SIBO and or leaky gut. And so those things have to be fixed even with when you have mold. Now, if we fix that, 
and it was good, and there was no mold, you would have felt better. Right. But you felt better, and then you didn't. Again. And then I didn't. And I, I remember I, I would get a massage, and um, and I really looked forward to this massage. And there were times that she had to use, as she called it, the pregnancy pillow, because my my belly was so distended that I couldn't lay on my stomach to have the massage, which I desperately, desperately wanted, you know. And so, but again, then I got better. But I was still really struggling with headaches and stuff too. Um, so then. After that was better, we, you looked at Marcon's, and there's a there's a nasal swab test that you do, and um, sure enough, <laughs> I had Marcon's, um, and so was put on a, a nasal spray off and on for about three four months, and then was tested again, and, and that was finally gone. Yeah, and what we see with with biotoxin is the barrier systems that help protect us against these other infections become weakened, so you're more prone to these infections. So there was definitely a list of items, or as we've talked about, a, an onion layer yes. that we had to really peel back to get to some core issues. So tell us, um, let's see, one other really important thing about SIRS was uh, how it affects your health, but also your home, and where the mold came from. Because we're talking about mold that's internal, and 25% of the population does not have the genetics to eff efficiently and effectively get it out of your body. So for you, we do suspect that, and tell us a little bit about what happened in, in the home and how that conversation went. Okay, well, when you, when you talked about surge, you said, you know, mold in your house. Well, I think most of us have a picture of what mold is. You see that black mold, and, and my house is clean, and it's relatively dry, and I went down the basement, and I looked, and I, I didn't see mold, and so then there's a test you, had me do that you wipe things down and I sent it in and sure enough it came back with mold and I thought okay and I I looked and it looked like a little bit of dust on the wall so I got the mask and I got gloves and I did the did Dawn soap with the with um, vinegar and whatever and I scrubbed and I scrubbed and I thought okay this is good um, meanwhile then you had suggested that I do blood tests so I did the blood tests for SIRS and I had the gene that wasn't going to allow my body to get rid of the toxins and I thought okay so I started with Mary um, and she started me on a powder that's not very pleasant <laughs> and it's four times a day and there's restrictions as to when you can eat when you can take pills what what you can eat but I okay but I wasn't getting better and so I did that that test again and there was still mold but I really don't know where it is because I really can't see anything yeah. in my basement. And it, I have had water a few times, and like when I had water come in through the windows, I had them blocked up. I put block window block in there, so there was no more water coming in. So I, I just couldn't get my head around the fact that my house would have mold in it. You couldn't see it. It didn't look there. You came no. back and told me a couple times there's nothing there. There's nothing, nothing there. there, and where it was when I, I mean, I didn't have anything against the walls, and so I really couldn't. But when I was doing the, the protocol with, with Mary, I wasn't getting better, and so then she suggested that I have this person come and test my house. And um, he had a brand new way of testing. He said the machine was um, developed at the UK for yeah. detection of anthrax, and instead of sucking up mold where you then could miss it, it was a light. So it was quite interesting. He just walked around with this light all over my house, opened doors, opened drawers, Upstairs, everything was, was less than 2,000 parts per whatever it was supposed to be. When he got to the basement, and the only thing I did down the basement basically was laundry. Yeah. And the area by the laundry was in the 300,000 parts yeah. per. Which and is not normal. <laughs> when he shows, he shows you the, the graph immediately right there, and you've got green, you've got yellow, and then you've got red, and my entire basement was red. And what was really um, so heartening with him is he, under he had SIRS. Yeah. He understood SIRS. His, his wife was so sick that she, he was afraid she was going to die. His kids had it. He's had mold in his house. He knows it all. And he, so he the trust fact, yeah. he absolutely got it. And he said, there's only one person I can tell you that will be able to remediate your house to the level that you need to because you have SIRS. And he gave me that man's name. He came and we, I said, take down the walls. I don't care. 
We took down the bathroom wall. We took down other walls. They were there for six days. They cleaned the vents. They cleaned everything. And then Dean came back. And what was in the 300,000s was 300 yeah. when he got back. Yeah. And so for the first time, I've lived in my house for 23 years. And so for the first time, my house isn't making me sick. Yeah, Liz was on it. It's like she, when I say she's on it, she's on it. She's been suffering. And so when she had a path to getting improved and improvement, uh, she took it. So yeah, 300,000 down to, to 300. 300. And then uh, my base, of course, right? We had all that snow last winter. And of course, then all, right as they're about ready to leave, a little bit of water is coming in. It's like, what? I just spent how much money remediating? So this summer I had a tiling system put in my backyard so that all the water gets funneled away. So for the first time when it rains now, I don't even think about it because I know the water is going away and my basement is clean. And, so. and the reason why this is so important is for Liz to get her health back, she had to work on her house and had to put effort in there. And there, there are cost effective ways of doing this and then there are expenses associated with it. So. So setting yourself up for that is very, very important. And, and for you to get your health back, it was, it was a key factor, yes? It was huge. I yeah. mean, so I, I look at this as I like to take trips. Um, I do some river cruises and things, and um, this cost me a river cruise. But I also hadn't been able to go on them right. because I didn't feel well enough to be away from home and to be someplace where I didn't know if I was going to be sick or be able to enjoy anything. So it was a cruise, but now if that's going to allow me to have my health back then it was it was and you just recently went on one didn't I you? did I and did you enjoy back. yourself loved it had no digestive issues whatsoever and um, when you're sick like that every morning you wake up and the first thing in your mind is how do you feel yeah. I, I, are you are you I was a special ed teacher so I had to be there for kids with behavior and I had to be in the moment and I had to have energy and it was really a struggle and so every day you would wake up and go how's it going to be today and yeah. to wake up and not have that be your first thought that's a gift too yeah for for everyone yeah 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 because yeah because you've got that type of heart to, to help others so um did you ever feel like giving up <laughs> I, in fact probably within the last year I, I know I came and I said you know and I think I even sent you an email and I said maybe it would be better to just not feel good because the feeling good and then having the crashes yeah. come was killing me yeah. <laughs> I mean I would feel so good because there's a difference between not feeling bad and feeling good and I was starting to feel good but then all of a sudden everything would crash back down and I was really struggling with that and saying what, is it ever going to end? I know you said it's an onion, but it's really big and I'm really tired of it and it was really hard. Um, and there were times coming in here that I, I walked in the door crying yeah. and your staff here, I remember the first day I came and I was already crying when I came in because I was so sick and the person at the, they don't even know me at the desk and she said, don't worry, he'll figure it out. And I thought, you don't have to say that. You don't know me, you don't know anything, but just having her said, say that to me really, it gave me, I took a deep breath and thought, okay, maybe this is the right place. Um, so yeah, giving up many times, but but I want a life. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I'm retired now and I wanna be able to have a life and, and I feel like I'm almost there. Not quite, but, yeah. I'm, but I'm getting there. Well, and your onion is very big. Because with, <laughs> with mold and genetic SIRS, you could walk into a moldy building and get, get triggered again. But what we've seen is the people who continue to get their health back become less and less affected or you know to leave that building right away or you know how to manage a little bit better so that it doesn't turn into the the depths of, of the dysfunction right. I, that you I used am to have. careful there's a house I know that I would I don't go in anymore I also have the powder available um, so I know if I get sick like yep. that I can take that I also have another that's a little less effective but it's a pill that I can take and it doesn't require any um, problems with um, eating so that I knew I could take that on my trip so if I did get sick it was there and all those things help bring the anxiety down. Because I, one of the first things, I, when I went to the Mayo Clinic and they said, you know, you're fine, and, and you know, people say, you have a stressful job and everything. It's like, yeah, I've had a, a job like that for 25 years. I found myself in a therapy session, and the person is asking me about what it felt like when I threw up when I was five. 
And I almost started to laugh because I just thought, I am sick. I am physically sick. And you want me to talk about growing up as a child. And that, that was kind of like, okay, I have got to find somebody. And shortly thereafter, this friend of mine told me about you. So, cause that, that was just a real turning point for me. Cause I knew I was physically sick. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing this video, because what you have is hard for the doctors to measure. So a lot of times it gets dismissed or just goes under the radar. And and people don't know that this is what's impacting them, and they don't know that if they have mold in their house, they might be able to detoxify okay from it. It still might be impacting them, but there are people, 25% of our population, that can't handle the toxins. And the estimate is that 60 to 70% of the homes in Minnesota have mold. And that's pretty consistent around the country. Even dry areas like Arizona have contamination issues because they're actually more prone to flooding because of their, their torrential rainfalls and stuff. So it, this is a, a problem around the country and really I think it's just starting to get on the radar of healthcare providers and, and it's not on the radar yet for a lot of the home builders but, but that's one of the things that we're planning to do is to educate people right. that this is a real thing, doctors too, so that people who are suffering, because there are people who go to therapy and they do, they do wonderful with it, you knew this, that wasn't the thing. Right. You just knew. Right, and the thing is, I mean, I came because of all the digestive issues because that is totally debilitating. If you can't eat, it's very hard to make yourself eat when you feel like you're going to throw up. Yeah. But it was arthritis symptoms. It was something that I never really even shared with anybody. It was, it was memory issues and word find issues. It was the headaches. But none of those things make sense together. Right. So you don't even think about them as being one thing yeah. but in fact all of those are symptoms of SIRS and so then when I looked at this list and I'm going yes 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 and then there were things that I didn't even realize were a symptom until I read them there and thought wow that is too and so that was really eye-opening because the digestive was was always the, the main focus yeah. but there were all these other things and I'm finding my arthritis is is, is improving too yeah so yeah, you're climbing out of that uh, that dark place there, and so yeah. I'm looking forward to see what you uh, have uh, going yeah, up so forward I. here. So if you could relay one bit of information to people who think they might have mold or biotoxin illness, or even just they don't know, they've, they've gone to their doctors, they've doctored, and the doctors are stuck, What what's that one piece of advice you would give? You just can't give up. I mean, when you when you hear Mayo Clinic, you you right away you have a picture in your mind of this of this institution that has all the answers, and um, not only did they not have the answers, they weren't interested in helping me find the answers, and that was the part that I I left that meeting and I thought I am so sick, and you and you're telling me I'm fine, and I don't understand it. This is the Mayo Clinic. You have to keep looking until you find someone that listens to you. Um, and that isn't necessarily following the, the regimented protocol that doctors go through. My GP doctor supports me seeing you 100%. If there's blood tests that need to be done, she will do them. Um, so you just can't, you just have to keep going. And, and just because you don't see mold, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I wish I could have taken, I should have taken pictures of what you didn't see in the area that was so horrendously filled with mold. Yeah. So. Well, I want to thank you today for coming in. Uh, your your story is going to impact a lot of people, help a lot of people, I hope and so, so. it's uh, with, with a lot of gratitude. Just thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. My pleasure.